So now that we have our geometry all aligned and set, I'm ready to move on to this next part. Now this is technically not required for 3D printing, but I'm going to be doing some extrusions and frankly I think it's just going to make it look a lot cooler. So I'm going to be adding some materials to this. So one way that I could do this is with a multi-sub object material. And I can just create a bunch of materials to apply to the different polygons that are in the scene. Now I'm actually going to do this, I'm going to show you a shortcut here in a second, but I just want to show you what's going to end up being the end result. So I would create a standard material and using the color selector, I'm going to sample the uh, color from the reference image in the scene. And I would just pipe those materials into the material IDs of the multi sub object material. And then I would duplicate it, grab the color and put it in and so on and so forth. Now there is a much easier way to do this. So stick with me for a second. I'm going to show you how to do that. But this is going to be the end result material that you're going to come up with. So I'm going to do a couple more colors here and then I'll show you a much faster way to do this. So to make these last couple colors, uh, let's go ahead and do that. I'm not going to hook these up to the multi sub object material. Now I'm going to hold down the shift key and I'm going to drag that standard material just like that. That's how I can make a copy. Click it, color swatch, sample. We'll do this just a couple more times. And like I said, I'm not going to hook them up to the multi sub object material, and there's a reason why. Okay, now here comes a tip. I'm just going to delete that multi sub object material. I don't even really need it right now because it's going to be generated automatically after I apply the materials. So if I just apply one material to the whole object, it's going to put it on all of the faces. But I only want these materials on specific faces. So I'm going to go into editable poly and polygon sub object mode. And I'm just going to select the faces or the polygons that I want to have a specific color on and I'm going to apply them right to those faces. So I'm um, holding down my control key and just selecting a bunch of those faces that share all the same pixel color. I'm going to go ahead and just assign those materials, uh, assign those faces that material. So I'll go ahead and select those. Oops, I want to undo that. I'm going to switch to select only so I don't accidentally move as I'm selecting. Double checking. And I'll right click and I'll just say assign material to selection. And so that material is now assigned just to those polygons. So using the same process, I'm just going to compare the reference image, select the appropriate polygons, and assign that material directly to the sub object mode. <laughs> Okay, now that I have all of the material assignment completed, if I just uh, go to a different view here in Slate Material Editor and just acquire the material, I can see that it has automatically converted itself to a multi sub object material. So that process of assigning the materials directly to the polygons was a lot easier than trying to create a multi sub object material and then trying to get all the material IDs correct. Some finishing touches here. I just want to make sure that all of the edge polygons match the colors of the pixels. So I'm going to go ahead and select the edge polygons and assign the appropriate color to them as well. Okay, so we have the completed sword. It's got all of the textures on it, at least in terms of the textures being completed. Now, we didn't do anything on the bottom side of the sword. We were only working on the top and I'm going to show you uh, a trick on how to do that. So you see there's the, the what about the bottom half? Well it's really easy to replicate all of the work that we've done on the top half just by using a modifier called symmetry. So I'll choose the symmetry modifier and you can see that 
it creates a duplicate or mirrors half of the geometry depending on the axis that we choose. In this case, we want to choose the x-axis. So uh, we choose x-axis, and then we'll adjust the mirror plane. And there you can see we have our uh, double-sided Minecraft sword. Again, this whole part of putting the textures on there is not necessarily required for 3D printing. So that completes this section on adding materials to your Minecraft sword. Again, not required to do that for 3D printing. Some 3D printers do print in color, but a lot of them don't. The majority of them probably don't. So uh, again, not required for 3D printing. So if you like what you saw here, please share and like this video. Stay tuned for the next part where we get into the finalizing of the geometry specifically for 3D printing. And you're definitely going to want to see that because that's how we make the model watertight and ready to go to the 3D printer. Thank you.